You are here this morning with Joan Yurkovich, your life coach on News Radio 1150 KSAL. Let's get right to one of our life coaching callers. So, George, what would you like life coaching on? Uh, porn addiction. Well, I've heard from this before. Tell me what some of the symptoms of what you're calling an addiction are for you. Some of the symptoms are... Well, what do you do? Are you the internet guy exclusively? Do you go to massage parlors? Um, do you internet have, guy. Okay, so you're not doing the escorts and, and no. all that kind of thing. So, in this, how long have you been kind of struggling with this? Uh, since, like, about, you could say, 16. 16. So you were 16 years old, and how old yeah. are you today? I am going to be 24 in August. Okay. And has this addiction, are you actually calling it yourself an addiction? I don't want to call it something that doesn't resonate with you, George. Yes. You do feel it's an addiction. Yes. So tell me why. It, it's because of uh, my, it's, it's become like a, a habit every time I, you know, I'm by myself or I'm doing, you know, I'm minding my own business. Next thing you know, I just, I just surf the internet and once I do this, like, this impulsive desire comes in and I just, I start viewing and then I won't stop for another, like, I'll start viewing and it'll, like, last me about, like, five, six, seven hours, so... And that sounds common, yeah. you know, that, you know, it's taking up a big piece of your day. Do you yeah. live alone or do you, are you, or are you trying to hide this from people that you live with? I'm trying to hide this from people I live with. Yeah. So you're kind of tucked away somewhere wondering now, are you in any kind of a, a relationship with someone at this time? No. So you're single. Yes. Do you, have you had any kind of serious relationship in the past? Uh, no, I have not. Okay. Would you maybe like to have one? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, I would. Can I ask, are you gay or are you heterosexual? I am uh, heterosexual. Okay. Okay. Not that it makes any difference because to me okay. this whole issue is all the same, but it just kind of gives me a basis of, you know, what kind of relationship you might be looking for. And, and truly, I think there are some a little bit different issues. What I hear from my callers and people out there, you know, gay men – and pornography isn't as huge of an issue as it is for some women that yeah. might you might want to date. Um, but but really, what it comes down to is you're you're spending so much of your time on something that you know you're beginning to think that's not exactly the way maybe you want to spend your life. Now, can you say, George, was there something at sixteen that was happening in your life that really might might have gotten you started or leaned you toward this outside of just being and being a typical guy who's starting yeah. to and wanting to explore was there something traumatic well i wouldn't say traumatic but uh i was definitely uh i mean i i, I tried asking a couple of you know a uh, girl out you could say and uh it didn't go very well because it was like i'm still new to it and uh it just the, the the act when they rejected me is just it hurt a lot. So, so from there, I, I don't know what happened. It just it caused it caused like a I don't know. I, I take things to heart a lot. So I guess the way she rejected me, maybe so that now, hurt. Yeah. Now was it just sort of an asking her out on one date, or had you been dating a little bit and she decided no. not to go anymore? No, I, I asked her out on one date. Okay, so one date, one rejection, yeah. and yeah. and was this just one time you tried to ask a girl out? Uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much it, but so I guess the amount of time I've gotten to know her, yeah, like I've gotten to know her a little bit, and then I finally had the courage to ask, and you know, the way she said no was a little bit, I don't know, it, it hurt. It hurt a lot. So. Well, sure it did. And, you know, yeah. rejection, you know, for all of us is difficult. Um, I have a number of children that are out in the dating world, and oftentimes they talk about that very thing. You know, they yeah. can have, and it sounds like you probably had quite a heavy crush on this this young yeah. lady because you'd been around her, maybe even kind of friendly with her, and yeah. had to probably do all sorts of acrobatics to build up the courage for yourself to even call her for the first time. Exactly. And, yeah, and then just this 
horrible total rejection. And when you're only 16 years old, man, you're just you're just trying to find out what kind of man you are, and yeah. what kind of man you want to be. And and what does the what does viewing the porn do for you? I mean, let's don't talk about we're not talking about sexuality. What yeah. I want to talk about is what does it do for you in the way of how it makes you maybe feel. Uh, minimize any feelings of rejection, embolden, yes. embolden your self-esteem, yes. make yes. you feel more relaxed, calming. Yes, yes. I, I agree with uh, all the statements above. It definitely gave me more, like it felt, I felt more courageous. Like when I was watching, I felt more courageous to have more self-confidence in myself, you know, and uh, it just gave me like a different kind of sense of, of a person that maybe I was wanting to be, you could say. You're just like a someone who is not as shy, not as timid, not as, you know, uh, uh, it just, uh, it felt, I don't know, it felt like a different person, you could say. Absolutely. You're in a yeah. different world. And, and yeah. you know, George, this isn't really honestly all that different from what I hear from some people yeah. who get so caught up in video games that they are playing online with people you know, in other countries that they will never meet in person, but that is their whole social life. You've almost created a world for yourself in this world of pornography that gives you that gorgeous girl that won't reject you. And, yeah. and you know, and all the other things that go along with, you know, obviously the expression of sexuality that, you know, that any young man, you know, typically does. I mean, we all know that you're not unusual in any sense of the word for viewing online pornography at 24 years old. You know, I mean, you know, all your buddies are doing it. They're just not doing it for five or seven hours a day. No. So, so when you talked about this makes you feel that increase in self-esteem more courageous, you know, more chivalrous around maybe even asking a woman out and self-confident. Yeah. Has there ever been a thought in your mind of how else you might get that? Because you're recognizing it's not really going anywhere when you're spending all this time alone in your room. How else might you foster some of those feelings in a more healthy way? Um, I guess I could, I could you know, just... Maybe just be around, uh, be socially active around, you know, people and, you know, just gain a more self-confidence by just talking. And if they like it, they do, they do. If they don't, they don't. Just keep on going who I am, you know. That's excellent. That yeah. is so good for you to, you know, have that realization, yeah. you know, to be socially around men and women, you know, yeah. people your own age and maybe not even thinking, okay, well, she's a cute girl and I'm going to get all nervous here because I would really like to ask her out. That's yeah. okay. But maybe that's just too big of a leap for you as you start out, you know, but get around them, be yourself, you know, and, and be yourself in the sense that you can grow into the person you maybe want to be. What, if I were to ask you, George, what kind of person would you like to be when you're in that social setting with, let's just say, a group of young people your age? Uh, the type of person I would like to be is just, I don't know, uh, uh, just a very energetic, but like in a positive way, just very energetic, happy, just like uh, happy to be alive kind of person who's just uh who's just like you know i loves everyone and just i don't know, expresses that love but you know i just i don't know it's it's really hard to explain just feeling it inside you want to yeah. have you want to feel i can almost sense that you could walk into a crowd and they would feel that energy coming from you if yeah. you could find it within yourself yeah exactly so have you ever been able to find that happy I like me. I want to spread love to everyone else. Not you're not going to sit there and say, "Oh, I love you, love you, love you." Yeah, you're no. just feeling it. And I believe in this presence of energy because when you've got that energetic system going on with you, George, your face is going to light up. You're you're going to have a whole countenance and demeanor that they're going to feel and sense and it's extremely inviting. Yes. Have you uh, had some success doing that very thing? Or have no. you always been the one who shies away? And honest to goodness, George, it's not even a problem if you're kind of the quiet, shy kid. It's not. Yeah. Not at all. You have to be who you are. Okay. Yeah. 
what are you sure. what are you what are you most comfortable? You want to be this energetic and, and this loving person. Energy to me equates to someone who's maybe more socially outgoing. Yes. But are you really more of an introvert who's is more comfortable one on one or more comfortable being quiet in the group? What is your comfort zone in a group of people? I think my comfort zone is when when I, I guess I can start the conversation and like everyone else would get involved and I wouldn't look or sound stupid and just worry about whatever I'm saying, like be so self-conscious. Uh, I guess one-on-one, you could say, and then from there to let it grow. Yeah. So is there someone in your life that you can invite to do something one-on-one, hang out with, guy or girl? Maybe I, a girl you have even absolutely no interest in ever dating. No attraction oh. whatsoever. There's no hmm. reason you can't have friends. That's true. That is true. Hmm. I, I, maybe now, yeah, I, I do have. I do have one or one or two. Yes, I do. Now, I can't say, I'm just going to be honest with you, I can't say there's sometimes those male-female friendships don't always, you know, kind of teeter on the edges of sexual attraction, maybe thinking about intimate, romantic, you know, something happening here. But when you're just kind of starting out, there's nothing wrong with kind of exercising your muscles of being more social and getting away from your whole social life, which is kind of what you've created in the darkness of your room on the computer with people that you can't touch a woman you can't truly touch and truly have a sexual relationship with which i know you want yes uh, yeah i I mean at some point you want that in your life yes you're right so so let's let's see again you know you want to do this one-on-one do you think it's going to be a guy or a girl that you're going to invite to do something with it would probably be a guy at first, just more of a comfort level with, you know, and I wouldn't be as, like, nervous to what to say, what should I do. I well, mean, with the same sex, it's, I'm, like, a little more comfortable just talking with than girls, I guess. Well, and, and I just thought I'd throw that out there because, you know, it's also okay, George, to try and exercise, you know, being someone different, even maybe with a, a girl cousin to start with. I mean, obviously, that's not going to go anywhere. You know, you're, you're not going to be dating her, but you can kind of pay attention to her, listen to what she says, kind of, you know, maybe ask her for some advice. You know, what a, what a got girls like from guys, you know, when they go to approach them. Um, you know, one thing that I'm hearing from you, because I talk to a lot of young people on my life coaching show, but one thing uh-huh. I'm also hearing from you is that you are very concerned about saying something stupid. Yes. I hear very that. Self-conscious, yes. Yes. And, and that is, that is again, something that you're just going to have to keep working to challenge yourself. It's like learning a new skill. And learning to be able to be comfortable in conversation, if you say something, not beat yourself up if it doesn't sound great. But here's my, here's what I tell these people to do. First of all, don't make saying something your number one priority. Make listening to them, listening, not saying, listening to them is your number one priority. And in making friends... Be mindful of two things. Use their name and make sure that that positive energy is is showing on your face with a smile. And those things, do you know how many people don't, would much rather than you say something sharp and witty and cute and funny, would much rather have you listen to them? Huh. No, I haven't really thought of it like that, no. It's a real cue for shy people that, honestly, I've known a lot of very successful people who've had to work through their shyness and their exact feelings that you have, exact feelings of, I'm so afraid to say anything when I'm around this group of friends because I'm going to sound stupid. But you know what? When they've taken the stance of, I'm just going to be known as the quiet guy, I'm going to, I'm going to listen, I'm going to ask questions, think about you know, when they start, listen real hard to what they're saying. And I guarantee you, it will be very easy for you to find interesting questions and they'll just huh. take it from there. 
they'll run with it. And they'll just think you're the best buddy in the whole world that you listen to them. Wow. Wow. I, yeah, I haven't thought of it like that. Yeah. And doesn't that give you, does that give you, George, a little sense of relief to know that you don't have to perform? Yeah, actually, yeah, it does. I mean, you really don't good. have to perform around these girls that are safe, like maybe a family member or a cousin or, you know, have a cousin has a girlfriend, um, yeah. you know, or, you know, and I know you're going to eventually have to want to jump into being around girls. And yeah. so I think you've got a starting point there. Let's 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 kind of continue with that. But let's also maybe take it to the point, uh, since we're on this call today, about how are you going to maybe bolster the confidence to get to where you ask a girl out? Hmm. Well, uh... You think uh, all these things we're talking about is going to lead you to where that's going to be easier? Yeah, you know... I think it would be, yeah. You know, you know, introduce myself, say my name, ask for their name, and uh, I guess from there. Uh, sure. Can I bring up a topic? Or I would ask something that's kind of open ended, like, "Well, what are you doing this? You know, this season or summer? Or oh. are you a student? Uh, what are your activity? What are your interests? You know, and take it from there. Any girl." Any any girl or guy loves to have someone paying attention to them and listening to them. Okay. And you're you're that kind of guy, aren't you? Yeah, I feel like I am. Yes, you're you're the quiet one. But I'll tell you what, George. Here's the cool. Here's the really cool thing about you. Okay, you're going to get a group of friends, and you're going to be positive and smiling and paying attention to them and really listening to them and letting them kind of take center stage. But every once in a while, George is going to have something that he feels is really important to say, really great thing he wants to share with this group, and are they ever going to listen to you? Wow. You know the old rattle traps that just, and everybody tunes them out finally, you know, at some point? I guarantee the quiet person who finally speaks up, people listen, because usually you have something pretty amazing and profound to say. Kind of uh, blows my mind how these quiet people can be in this, be sitting in a room full of people and hardly ever have any conversation or have much to say. And then when they do, the whole room just sort of stops and goes, <laughs> oh, my gosh, we never thought of it that way. Or that is so cool. <laughs> you know, and, and that's the kind of person that, you know, that you're going to be. So let's spend a little bit um Actually, I'm going to say, George, I'd like to spend a little bit more time with you, and I need to go to a commercial break, but I want to get into some real nitty-gritty of how we're going to get you to break free of the pornography, okay? Okay. 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 I want my listeners to stay tuned because we'll be right back with Joan Yurkovich, your life coach on News Radio 1150 KSAL.